part I love the most about being an artist is the ability to visually see yourself evolve through your work. So since I was a young child, I've always loved art and I've always loved to create these little picture books to work on. So in high school, I really discovered my love for painting and I eventually went on to earn my master's in fine art, focusing entirely on painting. Sometimes I do miss the smell of the art supplies and the ink and the paint and the freshly primed canvases. Uh, but now that I get to work digitally, I love the idea that I can work from absolutely anywhere. And because I like to work on projects at a quick pace, it's nice to have everything that I need. All the colors, all the textures, all the backgrounds, and everything that's all ready to go in one place. My studio space where I do all my creating is actually right here on my super cozy couch. Hi, welcome to my open studio. I'm Monica Mackay, and I'm an illustrator and author of children's books. One of the most exciting parts for me as an illustrator is coming up with the first compositions for the book that I'm working on. I love to think of the emotions, the colors, the shapes, the movements that I really want to portray on the pages. As I'm sketching, I consider first what's most important for you to understand from the reader's point of view and make sure that I get a lot of different visual elements in the sketches like patterns, movements, big and small shapes, and then I create different rhythms and interesting dynamics between all of those elements. Rhiannon and Yo-Yo Ma's performance was actually the first time that I was introduced to her work and was blown away by her talent and the power of her lyrics, especially for Build a House. And it's not really every day that an artist gets to illustrate to music, which is a really unique and special opportunity and um, something that I really enjoyed. It was so nice to get that additional inspiration from the music and how it was composed and really sense the emotion behind the manuscript as I'm coming up with the images for the book. Music has this magical ability to take you to other places and I really wanted to pull that out and find a way to put it into the spreads as best as I could. So I listened to each section of the song first and then I came up with this idea of this little family on a journey to create a home for themselves. They wanted to think about what would they see around them every day, what would they be wearing, and how would the book emotionally feel. I thought of my own family a lot while making this book and how much they must have went through to create a future for me, someone they wouldn't even ever know. I remember when growing up, seeing the images of slavery in history books or in school and finding it really hard to process that these this experience and this part of history is directly related to my family members and my ancestors and having to connect the two and bring that really into my own reality was pretty difficult to process. I thought about how to show the reality of that time but also show that they weren't just slaves, that was not their identity. I wanted to show that they were people first who had emotions, who experienced love, tenderness, moments of uplifting each other, and how they had to find ways to make it through by using whatever they had. And in this case, for this book, it was music. So when submitting my sketches for a project, I like to use a character design to show the art director how I want the book to feel. The character design shows my idea for the color palette and the extra visual elements. I wanted to show the emotional roller coaster of this family while also giving you an idea of the warmth that they also experience within their family life. On their journey to find a home, I looked for ways to show symbolically their level of hope. So I used the symbolism of the mother's water bucket 
the little girl's cottonwood tree seedling, the mule, the instruments, all to, all to convey their hope symbolically. The little girl has this silent understanding of the family struggle and her role in each spread is conveying this with optimism. So she holds this little light within the family dynamic. top two favorite things to illustrate are people and plants. When I'm beginning a new project, that is the first thing that I focus on, that's the first thing that I put in, and the first thing that I like to color. Part of that is because I really love facial expressions and showing the energy they have on that spread. With plants, I love putting in those little rhythms and those big shapes around the people and around the scene. There's something really soothing about illustrating each leaf and each little flower, especially when you've been working on something for so long. It gives you this little break to just make shapes and colors. So I felt like with illustrating such a difficult time in this family's life, it was important to balance that with soft and delicate moments in the plant life. And it was also a way to carry the story and carry the environment and to show changes in the scenery as they traveled and of course to add color and texture to the spreads. My favorite concept of the book is the cottonwood seedling and the little girl caring for it throughout the story. She's caring for this little plant knowing that one day it's going to be a tree. Even when she's picking cotton with her mother in the field, her plant never leaves her side. This is the first time in the book that you see the family playing instruments. And when creating this spread, it felt like it was important to capture them using music as their form of coping with a tragedy that just happened. Their first house was burnt down in this scene, and so to balance that, I tucked them away safely behind these bushes, and they're playing their instruments and finding strength and expressing their blues through song. One of my favorite spreads to create was the well scene. So this little girl's plant is dry and withered, similar to the family at this point in their journey. And this scene was one of the first that came to me when coming up with the spreads because of Rhiannon's lyrics, the well will never run dry. And I think that says so much about the inner strength that this generation must have had and their ability to survive, not just physically, but also they found ways to thrive emotionally and creatively and that's such a well of wealth that's still passed down from generation to generation. The well scene was really special to illustrate because I love the well as a symbol of the human heart and especially the heart of ancestors and the generations to come from them and how this will never run dry, how it's really a part of their lineage to have this abundance of hope and resiliency always available to them. When you spend so much time illustrating characters, you really do get so attached to their story and it was definitely that for me with this family. It really felt like I was on this journey with them. Build a House, written by Grammy Award winning artist Rhiannon Giddens, is being released this October by Canwood Press and I'm so happy you joined me here in my studio and I hope you enjoy this beautiful story.